Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. I thank God for saving me. Took me out of my Maori clay. And I haven't looked back yet. It's been 20 years now. Doesn't seem to be that long, but I praise God. 20 years ago, I answered his call. And the Holy Spirit moved on my heart, and I came running to the altar, giving my heart over to the Lord. I just thank God even for Kayla. Thank her for her support, and thank you all for your support. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you one more time. Lord, thank you for just another day, Lord. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Lord, I pray for, oh God, as this word will go forward, that someone, oh God, someone will hear this word, oh God. Someone will take it and apply it to their life, oh God. I pray, oh God, for those under the sound of my voice, oh God, to Hamilton Parish, oh God. I pray that even as they listen, oh God, as they hear my voice, oh God, they wouldn't just hear me, but they will hear you. Lord, so I just thank you, oh God, for this word, because I know it's already blessed. This we ask... And we pray in no other name, but it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tonight, our topic will be called, Everybody Needs Light. Everybody say it with me. Everybody needs light. Amen. We live in a world that has darkness and light. From the beginning of time, God spoke light, and there was light. In the Bible, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, and it reads, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Soon after God spoke light into existence, he separated the light from the darkness. He saw that the light was good. In the next verse, in Genesis 1, verse 4, and it reads, And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. In this verse, the light was the very first thing God said was good. Take a look in your Bible. The first thing God said was good was light. Amen? Further down in Genesis, you can read a number of times where God said it was good. He called many things good. But light was the first thing that he called good. Amen? God makes it clear that light has to have its own identity. By separating light from the darkness. When I looked online in the online dictionary, and this is what it told me, it said that light is the natural agent that stimulates sight. And it makes things visible. Read that again. It said light is the natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. That's why we can see, Amen. Long story short, without light, you wouldn't be able to see anything. Is that true? <laughs> Amen. While I was doing this little study on light, God brought back to my remembrance when I was young. And I'm sure many of you, when you were young, I was scared of the dark. How many of you were scared of the dark when you were young? You all, you all, you all tell the truth? <laughs> All right, well, at some point, I know I was scared of the dark, amen? Even today, many of us, even as young adults and adults, we are still scared of the dark. I ain't asking you to put up your hand right now. I don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> so, the Holy Spirit was showing me as he was talking to me about light and darkness. He was saying that this light was the only thing that he called good. He never called darkness good. He never called darkness good. I had a light bulb moment when I was thinking about this. I was like, Stephen, if he called darkness good, that would have meant that he have, would have made the devil equal with himself. The Holy Spirit gave me that revelation. The Bible tells us in 1 John Verse 1 and 5, it says, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declared unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Remember David in Psalm, Psalm 27, verse 1, David said, The Lord is my light 
and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? So he wasn't scared. <laughs> the Lord is the strength of my life. In whom shall I be afraid? That old devil always has to be opposite of what God is. Amen? So there's no way that he can be light. The devil tries, but it's only a counterfeit light, or imitation light. This is why he can use so-called stars, celebrities, musicians to promote his agenda, which is to steal, to kill, and destroy anything that looks, sounds, or acts like God, which is light. Amen? We look now into the text that we're going to be looking at very shortly, which is going to be Matthew 5, 14, and 16. That's the, that's the text that we're going to be using tonight. But I want to share this scripture that goes share with me. 2 Corinthians 4 and 6. It said, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen? Just wanted to share that scripture. If you take a pen, you can look at it later. But today our text is going to be from Matthew 5. 14 to 16, and it reads, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. And 15 says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, or some translations say under a basket or under a bowl, but on a candlestick, or some translations say stand. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. And it finishes with verse 16. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. This was always one of my favorite scriptures. Amen. Here the Bible in Matthew. We see Jesus here talking to his disciples. After telling them that they are sold of the earth. Now... We see Jesus here telling his disciples that they are the light of the world. Jesus, who is the ultimate light, amen, and as Christians or followers of Christ, we have to be a reflection of who he is. In this world of darkness, we are called to be lights. Just as it says in the, in the scripture, as a city is, cannot be hid, we cannot hide who we are, amen? If we say that we follow Jesus Christ, we can't be ashamed of his gospel and the one who we represent, amen? Because Paul says in Romans 1, verse 16, a very famous scripture, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. As we look back in our text in Matthew 5, verse 15, Jesus tells his disciples that you can't light a candle or put it under a basket or bowl, but you have to put it on a candlestick or put it on a stand. Yes, to let it shine, amen? Since we are lights of this world, we can't just have our own little light. We must put our lights on a stand so that it gives light to everyone. Not just those in our space, but everyone we come in contact with. Amen? That's why we should let our lights shine. Amen? This light is for everyone. In our text in verse 16, Matthew 5, 16, it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Our light should not shine just when you come to church. Let me say that again. Our light should not just shine when we come to church or when we are around our Christian brothers or our Christian sisters. Our light should shine wherever we go. People should see that light within us. They should see something different about you and me. Amen? It's not a bad thing to be different. 
it's not a bad thing to be set apart from the rest. Before we as Christians gave our hearts to the Lord, we were living in darkness. Can anyone attest to that? I know I can. Amen? Our eyes were blind to the things of God. We didn't want to hear any Jesus talk, as sometimes our friends say. I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to hear all that Jesus talk. That's how we were, some of us. We didn't want to hear about heaven Oh, we didn't want to hear about how. That's when we were living in darkness. Amen? Corinthians 4 and 4, it says, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. That's who we were before we got saved. Amen? Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. When you are blind, it means what? You cannot see any light. In John 3, 19, 21, and it says, And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world. And men love what? Darkness rather than light. Because why? Their deeds are evil. We were there. Can anyone attest to that? I know I can. Amen. Our deeds were evil before we saw that light. This is the devil's job to blind us, to take our eyes off of this light. Amen. This job from the devil is to blind us so we cannot see. So we can't see any light that's being presented to us. In the last part of our text, as believers, it tells us that we are, we are to let our light shine. The unsaved should see our good works. So one day, maybe they can be here. Maybe they can be here in Shekinah or be in a church, amen? So that the good works can glorify our Father, which is in heaven. That is the Great Commission. That's what we should all be doing, Amen? So one day they can be where we are. To those listening to me over these airwaves, the world we live in is dark. And it's getting darker and darker every day. We can see things that were accepted years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, that, w that were widely accepted now today. That we understand that we're, those things were morally wrong. But they accept it today, amen? Now they're calling these things right. Why? Because their eyes have been blinded, amen? The light hasn't shone in their hearts, amen? People can't see past their state of mind. People can't see past their present location or their present condition. Sometimes they, all they see is what is around them. Amen? Some of them say, later for loving our brother, later for loving our neighbor as ourselves. Talking about being our brother's keeper. It's about me, myself, and I. This is why the light is so important. Amen? This is why we need this light. They say later for you. Later for the church. They have no respect or no care for the things of God. But there is hope. Amen? Because we were, we were older at some point. So I want to hear, I want to understand Hamilton Parish. I'm not talking to you to say that I wasn't in that same predicament. I was once there in darkness, out there partying, getting drunk every weekend. I was the party guy. Wherever the party was, I was there. Wherever the soca cruise was, talking about the soca junkie, that was me. When they had the soca Byron Lee, I was there. Every Byron Lee concert, I was there. 
But for the grace of God. There go I. Because God had a better purpose for me. Because his light shone upon me. Amen. When he calls your name, you have to answer. Bible tells us, harden not our heart. Today is the day of salvation. Today someone needs to know about Jesus. There is hope. There is hope. And there is hope in Jesus Christ. Because sometimes people think we're always been saved. <laughs> oh, Lord. I had, I, had to, I had to remind somebody that two weeks ago. <laughs> I've not always been saved. Because of God, I could go there in a snap of a moment. If you want me to go there, I can go there. But I'm not going to go there because God shone his light upon me. Amen? And sometimes we get to that space. And I'm, some, I'm, I'm sure some of you have been to that space where you can just go there. But thank God for his grace and mercy. God's grace and mercy. He will heal your tongue and give you his peace. A peace that the world can give. And the world can take away. We have to understand that. Because he is the prince of peace. Amen. But yeah, I had to, that was two weeks ago. I had, I, had to remind, I had to remind them, I can go there. But it's not all about that. That's why this word tells us we need to glorify our father, which is in heaven. And I, and I think that's what I did. Because I didn't go to that level. I didn't stoop to that level. I could have put hands on you. I could have put hands on you. But praise God, amen? Praise God. Because God is a God of a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. Hamilton Parish, God loves us. Because the word says, while we were yet sinners, he died for you and he died for me. He died for us, even when we was out doing a pack, when we was out doing things that we shouldn't be doing. But God saw 20 years later where, you will be, where I will be. He knows where you were and now where you are now. And we can just give God praise. We can give God thanks because he's brought us all from a mighty long way. I just thank God. But we find ourselves hearing people saying these things later for you, later for the church. It's about me. I ain't worrying about how. I ain't worrying about heaven. I'm living life the way how I want. That's what you hear. I'm sure you have, you've all heard that from even family members. I'm living the life how I want to live it. But God has a greater purpose for you, Hamilton Parish. Amen? In a world that seems to be getting darker, the world needs to see your light, Hamilton Parish. The light is still within. You just have to allow the Holy Spirit to open up your heart to see that light. Amen? As I said, I was, I was there. Came up in the church, but then went my way. You heard the word, you heard the gospel, you saw the life live before you, but thank God for his word, he said you raise up a child in the way that they should go. When they are old, they will not depart from it, so parents do not get discouraged when we see our young ones not doing those things which we want them to be. I was there, my, my brother calls me the prodigal son, That's what, my brother calls me the prodigal, but I praise God and I'm praying for him. Amen? Because God knew the purpose that he had for my life. And I, I pray that you guys stay prayed up because someone prayed for me. I had a grandfather pray for me, a mother prayed for me, a father prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time to pray for me. And here I stand, proclaiming God's word. Amen? Not ashamed of his gospel. Amen. I thank God. For that. So I just want to encourage someone tonight because 
Someone's been praying for that brother. Someone's praying for that sister. Someone's been praying for that child. Someone's been praying for their husband for 10 years, for 20 years. God hears your prayer. Stay faithful. Stay faithful and trust in him. God will do it. Amen? It's not in our time. It's in his time. We have been created for a purpose. We have been created in his image. We have been created in his likeness. So we need to let our light so shine before man so we can let our Father, which is heaven, be glorified. Amen? You may now need to allow the Holy Spirit to turn on your light, Hamilton Parish. You might be hearing me for the first time, or you might have heard my voice before. Something that you've heard tonight, I pray that you will take it and apply it to your life. God knows who you are. God created you. God loved you. And he still loves you. Amen? Despite what you've done, despite what you did just now, despite what you're doing right now, God still loves you. My prayer is that if you don't believe on the name of Jesus Christ or accept him as Lord in your life, today, let this day be the day of salvation. Let today be the, the day that you take off those blinded eyes. Amen? Take that state of mind and give it to God. The devil's job is to steal, kill, and to destroy. His job is to blind your eyes. So you can't see the light for yourself. That's where I was while I was out partying, doing my thing, drinking it up. I weren't worrying about no light. But God was always there. And Hamilton Paris, God is still always there. Amen. We just need to take off those blinded eyes. I, got, I, 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 like, I like God, what he, what he did on the road of Damascus. Put the scales on his eyes. Because maybe if those scales wasn't on Saul's eyes, I don't think he would have been King Paul. Because it was a walk of faith, amen? It was a walk of faith because he had to allow somebody to take him. He couldn't see. So he had to perish. Allow this word to take you. Allow this word to take you to the one who has that light for you, amen, who is the ultimate light. There comes a time, and there will come a time when this light that we preach and we speak about, he will come back, amen, for those who accept him as Lord and Savior. And his word says that he's prepared a place for us, a mansion, amen, streets paved with gold. No more crying. No more dying. Hallelujah. A glorified body. Some of you don't like your body now. You're going to have a glorified body. Amen. Some of us don't like have growing a little inch, a little inch here and there. But God's going to give you that glorified body. Amen. Hallelujah. Let Jesus' life come into your life today. Amen. You will never be the same. You will never be the same. I, I just wanted to take this time out just to share a little bit about this light, this light called Jesus. Someone needs your light today because you were created for purpose. You might not feel like you're nothing right now. You might feel like nothing's going right. But God has a purpose for you. Let the tests and the things that you go through be your testimony. Thank God for all those who testify tonight. Because sometimes we go through. But God gives us a testimony, amen? Because we overcome. We are overcome because of this testimony that we have by the blood of Jesus Christ, amen? So I just wanted to take a few minutes to, to talk about this light. I have one more scripture in John 3, 19 to 21. And it says, and this is the condemnation, that the light is come into the world. And man love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. And in 20 it says, For everyone that does evil hate, hated the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds shall be reproved. 
But, there's always a but, amen? 21 says, but, he that does is truth cometh to the light. We need to come to the truth, Hamilton Parish, my saints and friends. That his deeds may be made now manifest, that they are rough than God. Because God has something better for us, amen? Because we're living in a world. Our deeds were evil when we were living in this sin or living in this dark world. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's whosoever believeth him shall not perish, but you now will have everlasting life. Trust and believe. Amen. This light, let this light come in. Amen. Into your heart today. Thank you for your time. I pray that something that you've heard, I pray that you've encouraged, you'll be encouraged. You will now look at your life a little bit different than you've looked at your life. Because the word says that I preached just now, everybody needs light. Amen. Thank you.